So good evening. Uh, this is Edward and Anne, and uh, it's the 29th of November in the year 2017. At least the last time I checked, it was 2017. Hold on a second here. Let me pause this. And I believe um, what we'll do is launch into a more in-depth teaching tomorrow. What this, this word tonight is on spiritual warfare. And it's something that we live with all the time, and it, it just helps to have a little bit more insight. Sometimes you get so close to things that you can't see the forest for the trees, as the saying goes. And I know that's the case for, you know, for us as we walk with God. Sometimes we get so close to situations or even the dynamics within ourselves that we don't see it because we've been around it and exposed to it for such a long time that you become almost callous to certain aspects uh, within yourself or in the realm of spirit. And, you know, more and more as we are coming awake, and un- unfortunately, we're still coming awake. I wish that I could say we are fully awake, but if we were fully awake, we wouldn't be on this phone call and we wouldn't be on this level. Because it really has to do with totally coming alive. And I think that that's interesting. That seems to be something the Lord wants to talk to us about here for a moment. It's totally coming alive. Um, You know, the, the scripture talks about how, you know, he will save you to the uttermost, spirit, soul, and body. It's in the book of Hebrews, unto the day of Christ, which would be at, unto the time of transformation. And and so we've been in that process of being, hello, Jeff, glad you could make it. And I think that's Joy and Rebecca, Arthur and Daphne, Anne and myself. We have a quorum. And the kings will sit at the table tonight, the gavel's in our hand, and we shall move forward. <laughs> it's true. It, it, we all know that it's true. So what we're talking about is spiritual warfare tonight. But what we're also talking about is coming alive. And I think that half the time the word that God speaks it's a word that enlightens, it's a word that, that takes down walls, opens doors, but it's it's also a word of intercession and, and groaning, you know, because we're reaching for something that is here, but we haven't seen it. And so, but yet it's right here. And it really has to do with our cry to really come alive. I mean totally come alive and maybe that's that's just one element of what we're going to talk about tonight and I just want to voice that um, I don't know that there's any astounding teaching it's just the fact that our destiny at this time is to c- come fully alive and I don't know, let's see here, hold on a second, oh good, Vonda's on, okay Vonda, that that must be you, yes, Um, Joy was going to get on, I hope she didn't um, fall asleep, but that's okay, she'll get it even if she's resting, so coming alive It you know it's like it it's it's it sounds so simple, and yet 
our cry has been to know him. You know, Hosea 6.3, you know, he has wounded us and, you know, whatever, you know, well, you could read Hosea 6, 1 through 3. Um, it's, it's been our path. And, and, you know, and it talks about on the third day he'll raise us up that we might stand before him. And, and so I never really thought about, about it. I know that the path has been very, you know, intense, very thorough. He has, you know, humbled us. He has brought us low. He has, you know, well, you name it. Uh, you know, we could fill in a paragraph um, of what we've, you know, of what God has set before each of us in in our path. And yet the promise is, on the third day, He'll raise us up, that we might stand before Him. And I don't know that I really ever thought about that. He's going to raise us up and what that means. You know, it's just one of those things, you know, you just assume, okay, I I don't know how we assume, but we just have this idea, maybe without giving it legs, that, okay, we're going to be in his presence and we're going to, you know, and rule and reign, and, and, and that's the extent of it. And we don't necessarily look at the, at the nuts and bolts of how it will be and what it will be and what it entails. But in effect, our destiny is to come fully alive to him, in spirit, soul, and body, on every level of our being to come fully alive to him. And as that happens, and I forget where it is, you know, I've quoted it, but I forget where it is. I think it's, well, it's, it's probably in the book of Psalms, but, you know, it talks about in his light, you know, we see light. There's an element of coming into that fully unwrapped positioning in him where everything becomes open and visible to the sun. It's not selective perception or selective eyesight. It is just eyesight, spiritual sight. You you don't select what you're going to see or don't see, you just see. And so we're coming alive to God. And yet that's not a new term. Because in our sojourn, we have progressively come more and more alive to him. And yet, we stepped over a threshold. Somewhere in all of this, we stepped over a threshold. And now, when we talk about the hastening work of the Spirit and the transformation that's happening to us, it really has everything to do with the fact that every faculty that we possess is becoming alive to God. And that is what is astounding and so unique that we're being brought into this seemingly progressively, but much more quickly than we've ever experienced in the past. And I think that's our groaning, you know, it's our groaning is to know him. And that's that was Paul's groaning in Philippians three, you know, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. So Paul equated the act of knowing the Lord with experiencing the resurrection. You know, because the word says, I am the resurrection. I am the way, the truth, the life. You know, but Christ is the resurrection. All these mystical things that we've, we've, you know, we've rehearsed, we've read. But now, here we are. We're in the most amazing place or position that 
men and women of God have ever been on, you know, since things have begun. Because we're walking this out. And, you know, gradually beginning to understand what is happening to us, what's happening within us. I mean, our drive has always been to know the Lord. But what does that mean, to know the Lord? I guess we all have concepts of what that means, but I don't know if we really, truly will know what that means until we know what that means. Play in words. Until we enter into that level of change. So, if something's something's happening, and we are coming alive more than we've ever experienced, and that is continuing to be our cry, even though it sometimes can feel like you take one step forward and five backward. And you always have the enemy that tries to accuse you. And yet, you know, there's nothing that he can say. You know, he, he could say this, that, and whatever. And you know, what do we have to say? Yea, Lord, though you slay me, yet shall I serve you. According to the world, what are the sons? I can tell you what they are according to the word even. The lame, the halt, the blind. That's the um, uh, that's the qualification. Someone comes and says, oh, I want to be a son, I want to be a son. Okay, well, first qualification, you have to be among the lame, the halt, the blind, that no flesh would glory and say, see what I've done, see what I've become. God has a unique way. What was it that Paul said? That God gave him a a thorn in the flesh. Now, there's been a lot of people out there that have opinions of what Paul's thorn in the flesh is, but that's not really the point. God gave Paul a thorn in the flesh. What was a thorn in the flesh to Paul may be nothing to us. I don't know. And yet, that was part and parcel. And God has given each of the sons, a thorn in the flesh. Maybe a couple of them. Maybe half a dozen. I don't know. Sometimes I just feel like we're just, Lord, you didn't just give me a thorn. I, I've become, well, whatever. Yeah, you get my gist. And all you can do is bow before him. Thank you, Lord. And thank you for that thorn. Uh, There are times when it, you know, when I feel like I'm sitting on it. But uh, it's okay. But it's all part of the path and the destiny that has been what God has required. But we're we're on the flip side of of a lot of this, and we are coming alive. And it's not something I want to just make an assumption and say, "Well, yes, of course we're alive. We have this revelation. We have insight. We have a certain sensitivity and 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 
to the spirit realm and, 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 you know, so on and so forth. And, and I just, I feel like we do have all of that. But in many ways, it's like the manna of yesterday. The Lord, what was adequate for yesterday isn't adequate for today. What we had of you yesterday was enough. But what we have of you to, today has to be far greater. We cannot move forward with what we had of you yes, of last week even. It's not going to be enough. It has not been enough. And so this is all part of waking up and coming alive. Because I think we all, we all realize, Lord, what I had from you last month, last year, and last week was wonderful. But I know that it's not going to be enough for what the demands are that you're going to continue to place upon me and what is going to come. It's not enough. But in the same breath, I know that you have to do your work within me, within all of us. You know, it's not that we're going to going to go there and bang the wall and 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 just come up with uh, you know pull ourselves up by the bootstraps and just have a little bit more of God all of a sudden. He has to do it. You know, that's always been the word. It's His good pleasure to give us the kingdom, but He's at work both in us and you know to do to will and do of His good pleasure. I think that's how it goes. Lord, you have to do this. This is your kingdom. This is your timing. We are your sons. We're not going to complete in the flesh. However, however much of the flesh still remains within us, even if it's just an, a, a minuscule amount, we're not going to complete in the flesh what you've begun in the spirit. You have to complete this in us and bring us into our inheritance. And that's where we are, and that's our cry. And that was Paul's cry. And every other man of God that walked the face of the earth, it was their cry. To know the Lord is an experience of transformation yet awaiting us. Not to say we haven't moved into it in a measure, because we have. But there's so much more here for us to enter into. So, this is just meant to be a short meditation. Um, Something the Lord wants us just to kind of ponder on. Because I know that we're coming alive. Doesn't matter if it feels like we have one day of awareness and five days that we're in the fog. That's not valid. The fact is, we are coming alive. Your body is coming alive, and in some way, what's really at the heart of it is that our spirits are coming alive, and that's something that I don't know how well we understand yet, because you could say, well, aren't our spirits alive um, and functioning, and and, and they, they have been and are, but yet... In some capacity, our spirits are still coming alive. Because that's really what we're talking about. We're not talking about the mind and the soul coming alive. It will mirror what's happening to our spirit. So what we're talking about really is our spirit coming alive. And what those dynamics are, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know what that means. I'm not really sure 
you know, we're, we're looking and we, we keep doing this. This is how the mind goes backwards. We're looking for a sign in this realm through our physical eyes that we might see him or something that just comes alive to us in our mind and a revelation and something. But, I, you know, we've got it backwards because it's our spirit that has to come alive and it's our spirit that has to see. And so if nothing else, maybe I'm just addressing something that will stay in our consciousness from this point forward, that the drive and cry of our spirit is to come alive. You know, we have this idea that because spirit is spirit, that it knows all things and, you know, has it wired. But there's so much we don't know about our spirit. I mean, so much we don't know. And so it can be easy to make an assumption, you know, it would be like assuming that the cloud of witnesses have got a handle on everything, and they really don't. The cloud of witnesses are still going through a work of the cross, still going through aspects that are completing them. Just because they've transitioned doesn't mean that, you know, it's all over and, hey, home run, you're, you're there. No, it just means that the work transitions and continues on with them on that side of the veil. And we've talked about that before. And that being in the flesh, or physical, as we call this, it's you can move more rapidly in your maturing and growth in God on this side of the veil because of just the dealings of God and, 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 and how the dynamics are with your whole, you know, your whole being. Because when you're on the other side of the veil, certain elements aren't as accessible in the dealings of God, I gather. But in any event, the progress moves more slowly. You know, it still is continuing, but it goes more slowly. So on this side of the veil, things, you know, it's more advantageous with respect to the maturing that we're going through. I'm not sure how I got on this point, but it's just this, oh, I, I, okay, got it. But it's this whole thing of our spirit coming alive to God. And, and I know that our spirits are active. They're busy. They're, they're very much involved in implementing aspects of the kingdom right now and very much involved in the warfare because we carry it in our bodies. I mean, we, we know, you know, um, but there's still an aspect of unwrapping or waking up that has to happen for our spirit. And that is something kind of new. I haven't really addressed this. I haven't really talked about this before. And this was not at all the plan for the word tonight. It's just that once we started, all of a sudden, I, the Lord began to just input something different. And so I thought, okay, let's just go with this and see what, what you want to speak to us, Lord. Um, so maybe tomorrow night we'll get into the other word, which is more of a war, a word on spiritual warfare. But right now, the Lord is talking to us about knowing our spirit and understanding that there's a dynamic happening where our spirit is waking up. And, you know, we've said before, that's really the whole element of sight, when you see him, you'll be like him, for you'll see him as he is. So we would think, okay, well, when I see him with my eyes of my, my carnal being, my flesh, my physical, or when I have that inner perception revelation that happens, which really comes through the mind to you, it may originate in the spirit, but it's being channeled through the mind. 
And so oftentimes that's what we think of. Well, when I see you, Lord, which means when I get that revelation in my mind and it translates, you know, I got it, I see it. And as best as we can, we're wrapping our head around grasping something of a deeper spiritual unfolding, but it's on this level. Rather than understanding or realizing that it's not about this level at all. It's not about getting a revelation or whatever. All that's going to distill down from your spirit. You know, so when you finally get it, it's only come because your spirit first, you know, broke through into it. And so we're really talking about seeing the Lord on a level of spirit. And I wonder, I wonder about resurrection life. I wonder if what we're looking for is a breakthrough with our spirit to see the Lord and then the resurrection of our body will follow suit because it will translate down from the breakthrough that our spirit gets in really seeing. Because it's not about seeing with the eyes of the flesh or physical. It's about seeing with the eyes of your spirit. Isn't that how it goes? You know, may the eyes, may the eyes of your heart be enlightened that you might know the riches, you know, so on and so forth. I forget where that is. But it was Paul was saying, the eyes of your heart. No, not the eyes of your flesh, not your carnal eyes. The eyes of your heart, the eyes of your spirit. May the eyes of your spirit come alive that you might know what has been freely given to you. Well, what are you saying, Paul? He's saying, not the eyes of your, your flesh, not your physical, not your mind, where you can, I got it. Oh, I understand it. You know, I, I, can, I got it. No, the only way you get it is if the eyes of your heart, the eyes of your spirit, sees it. And that was his prayer. As he spoke to, I don't know which church it was, Corinthian church, whatever it was, those churches, you know, so laden with coming out of the realm of soul. And his prayer is, oh God, that the eyes of their heart might see, might know. Because if that happened, they would get it. And there would be a transformation that happened to the churches. Well, that word is still, yea and verily, for right now. That the eyes of our spirit come alive. And that we see. And I don't know in the spiritual conflict that we've understood the effect that the spiritual warfare has had on us, the contacts and bonds and witchcraft and, you know, all of that stuff, how much that has affected the ability for our spirit to see. Because our spirit is in the battle. Our spirit is in the warfare and the conflict. And so oftentimes you'll get, you know, we'll get a sign like Ann got a sign earlier today, I forget what it was. Could have been um uh what's one that you get so often? Choking? No, not that one. Um No. Whatever what was that? Uh, anyway, she gets you know, the these signs, uh it, it's treachery. That's, That's the one. Right. And she gets that quite often, you know. Um, and, and you could say, well, you know, so you're, you're trying to figure, okay, well, where's the treachery coming from? You know, once you, you know, you kind of grasp what it means. And so you're, you know, you're out there in, in one way, shape or form, thinking about your physical manifestation and your physical being and what you are in the physical and what it is that's trying to come against you in treachery, which would be like, kind of a back door thing rather than realizing that it has to do with your spirit um, and just kind of changing our thinking what our spirit is in the midst of 
and what is hitting our spirit uh it's just kind of a mind a little bit of a mind warp thing to try and just look at things a little bit differently um And so, anyway, that's just my, my, my prayer before God tonight is, Lord, that our spirits might see. And then seeing will change. And that change will translate down to the physical body. And one of the words and prophecies that came years ago had to do with the resurrected body and the physical body. And it was very simple. The physical body is the mirror or projection of the soul mind that you are. But as you break into a walk in the spirit, where your spirit is the dominant factor and not your soul, then your body is going to transform and it will mirror the spirit or resurrection life. So up until now, our bodies, mind, and consciousness reflect you know, the uh, the soul. But we're coming out of the soul into the ascendancy of the spirit and the natural shift is going to be that the body is going to reflect the spirit. And that to me is resurrection life. Lord, may our spirits open up. May our spirits wake up May our spirits fully come alive because as they do, every other part of our being, the mind, the soul, you know, the physical, it will all follow suit and it will come alive as well. But it doesn't start, you know, like we said, bottom up or whatever. It doesn't start from the soul. Oh, I got it. I got it. I see it. And then you translate it to the spirit. And the spirit says, ah, oh, I was wondering when I was going to get that. No, the spirit breaks through. The spirit sees and grabs. And there's a change of your spirit. And the physical and the, and the mental and the, has no choice but to follow suit and be changed because a change has happened on the level of your spirit first. And that's my contending before God. Lord, I understand this is how you're doing it. And I loose our spirits to see. You know, I prophesy against the bottlenecks that we're still wrestling with that are blocking the ability for our spirit to see. It's time for transformation. We know that. I mean, it is beyond time for transformation. We are right here in the jet stream. And we have to have it. We are, we are, we are getting desperate. I mean, maybe it's felt a little, a little desperation on the edges. I don't know. But it's going to get a lot more desperate. Not despair, but desperation. We have to have it. We have to have the change. It has to happen now. Not, not next, you know, not any other time. It has to happen now. It's been a build up for months now, for several years, as God has been talking about resurrection life and the fact that we have it, but we don't see it. But you have it. As far as I'm concerned, we are at the pinnacle. We're at the precipice. We have to have the change. And our spirits must break through to fully see and be transformed and translated down to this physical body. And I know that there's a dimension, there's an aspect where, you know, it it talks in the Word how the very power that was projected to Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration transformed Him as the Father you know, hovered and told the disciples, hey, this is my beloved son, be quiet. And it was a change that happened. And what are we looking for is a seeing of uh, something to happen in a vision as seeing the Lord. 
Your spirit breaks through and you see him. And whatever that, that, that equation is, whether it's the Father projecting the same power that He transformed Christ and it's being projected to us as the Word says, and in conjunction with that, the eyes of our spirit open up and you see the Lord. And somewhere in all of that equation, the transformation happens. But it has to happen from the Spirit first. We have, we have questions for the Lord. I know we have questions. But this is the time. And we don't buy into any of the deception of the enemy that says you have to work up to achieve this, that you have to be a certain way to achieve this, or any other uh, 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 measuring stick. We're here. We're positioned And this is our destiny. And God is doing this and will do it. But it has to happen now. Our spirits have to break free and have to see the Lord on the level of transformation that is needed. It has to happen now. So I think that's all that I want to address this evening. Uh... You know, this is another word of intercession, but it's also just another insight on how to look at what's happening, because it's all about our spirit. And we're coming up higher in the middle of all of this, we're coming up higher. And I say, Lord, hasten it, complete this. Lord, it doesn't take many but few. And there's a quorum here, Lord, before you. And we're in agreement. Let this happen now to our spirits and to our bodies, to our minds, to every part of our being. But it happens now. The breakthrough of sight opens up on a realm of our spirit that changes our spirit to the uttermost. And Paul says, I pray that the eyes of your spirit might see resurrection life, and you might be changed. He could have said it that way. I demand it. I demand of my spirit that we see resurrection life. And I know that there have been the dynamics of our soul flesh that have greatly impeded the growth of our spirit at times because of the soul's you know, the soul warring with the spirit. Bottom line, soul wars against the spirit. And, and all the, the insecurities of the soul and the bonds and, you know, all the stuff we've talked about. We know that. But we're much further down the road now than we were six months ago or several years ago. It doesn't matter. We're much further down the road. And I claim this tonight. There has to be a first fruits. Whether that's one or a hundred, it doesn't matter. There has to be a first fruits that breaks this. And I declare our spirits have been sent into the earth for this purpose. Our spirits have a body, our body, have a manifestation. But nevertheless, our spirits have been sent to receive the promise of resurrection life. Just like Daniel, you know, he says, go thy way, Daniel, lay down and take a nap, and I'll raise you up in the last days. Well, we are all of the company of Daniel. Whomever we all might be individually doesn't matter. Special and unique we are. To him. But for this purpose, our spirit has been sent. That we, it, we, spirit, soul, and body, we might partake of the promise that has been foreordained for us from the beginning of time to receive. 
In many ways, we're, we're writing the last chapters, but we're also walking the last chapters out because He has predestined us for the adoption of sonship, for the transformation of our bodies. We've been predestined. This is why we've been sent to receive the promise. Maybe there's been a little bit of writing of chapters, you know, that have, has had to be done. But nevertheless, this is why we are here. This is the reason we are here. This is the only reason that we have been birthed into the natural plane and have lived here. There is no other reason. Not to raise a family and have children and successful businesses or anything. For one reason, you've been brought forth. That you might break the tape and enter into resurrection life and receive the promise that the Father gave you, just like he gave it to Daniel. Go thy way, Daniel. At the end of the days, you'll raise up and receive your allotted portion. No different for each one of the sons at this time. Go thy way. I will raise you up at the end of days that you might receive your allotted portion. You're not just a random Christian. We know that. The sons are not just random Christians who, oh, happen to have a revelation of God. No, they have been uniquely and specifically sent. Each one of you have been uniquely and specifically sent for this hour. There is no other reason or purpose for your existence. And what, invol- what evolves out of the tra- after the transformation is up to what the Lord has. because each one is so unique. So I loose this tonight. I loose the transformation of our spirits. I loose the waking up fully of our spirits. I loose the promise in in Isaiah, wake up, wake up. And I say, Lord, I don't care about waking up my physical body and my mind and having some clarity. I'm concerned about my spirit waking up and seeing and coming alive that I might see the Lord, that I might see the Father, that I might see resurrection life in my spirit. And I know that it will translate down to every other part of my body. And the promise is spirit, soul, and body will be redeemed blameless under the coming of God and coming of the Lord. It's here upon us. And, and transformation is here upon us. And I loose our spirits. I loose the spirits of the sons who've been sent into the earth for this time. That they might receive their allotted portion of resurrection life. Of moving into the ruling and reigning of the kings and priests. And every other thing that it might involve. I loose you tonight. I loose myself I lose our spirits to continue to come alive and not be fettered or, or, or buffeted by the body or by the soul or the mind or any of the other complexities that would try and just kind of clutter our spirit. I declare our spirits are free, uncluttered, and able to see. And I lose this transformation. This is the will of God. This is the Father's will that we would be changed. And I say, Father, I want the allotted portion now that you sent each of us into the earth for. I want what you promised Daniel and you promised each of us before we came. It's time now. Bring it to pass. Not another day no spirit of delay. And that's the promise in the book of Revelations, right? One foot on land, one foot on sea. And the angel says, there shall no longer be delay. And I say that, there shall no longer be delay. And I loose that for us tonight. I bless all of you and we seal the word and we'll see what else we do over the next couple of days. Amen. Thank you for being with us, and we send our love to everyone.